we have seen that we can make the face-centered cubic structure more complicated by adding atoms to half of the tetrahedral holes. If we do that with the same elements that are at the face-centered cubic atoms, uh, we obtain the diamond structure. If we add a different second element, then we end up with the zinc blend structure, which is also called sphalerite. There is an excellent page on the website of the University of North Texas. Uh, you can find the link in the comment section below. This page displays ordered structures based on sphalerite and verdsite structures. Recall that sphalerite is just another word for zinc blend. The first structure that we're looking at is indium gallium arsenide, INGAAS2. We can think of it as indium at the corners, the indium at the corners, and two of the faces, gallium at the other four faces, so the gallium would be the brown, and arsenic is in half of the tetrahedral holes. So tetrahedral holes inside here we can see are the green figures. So the greens are in half tetrahedral holes, and that is the arsenic. The second structure that we're going to look at is called luzonite, Cu3 AS S4. In 1979, the Little River Band wrote a song about it called the Luzonite Loser. Loser. We get this structure if we place copper at each of the faces, so each of the face positions, arsenic at each corner, so these are the arsenics, and then at half of the tetrahedral holes, we can see the sort of lime green, that is the sulfur. So in this particular case, we see two unit cells stacked on top of each other, next to each other. The reason why we're putting two together in this particular case would become clearer when we start looking at the even more complicated structures uh, derived again from zinc blend sphalerite. The third structure in our sequence is called chalcopyrite. It has the chemical formula CuFe. S2. Copper and iron share the corner positions 50-50. They share the face positions also 50-50, and sulfur fills up half of the tetrahedral holes in each of the half of the overall unit cell. And we see that it's tetragonal, not cubic. So the top part and the bottom part are not identical. Make it a little clearer, I'm kind of turning it sideways. So while we can build each of these pieces separately, and I have uh, plans that do that, to construct the entire unit cell, we need to combine both of these particular parts. In this particular case, each of these particular parts is made from an identical subunit. So this subunit and that subunit are essentially identical, but one of them has to be flipped over and then attached to the other to make the final complete unit cell. We kind of tilt it this way. It's a little easier to see where the tetrahedral holes are. You can see the sulfur atoms in there. So while each of the subunits is essentially cubic, the overall unit cell for this particular compound, chalcopyrite, is tetragonal. The fourth structure in our sequence is the femantonite structure. Its chemical formula is Cu3SBS4. This one starts to get much more complicated because we have copper being located at five or six faces, and at half of the corners. Antimony is found at one of the six faces and at the other half of the corner positions. Half of the tetrahedral holes 
are again filled up with sulfur. This is another crystal for which we must construct two halves, flip one of them, and then attach the two pieces to construct the entire overall unit cell. So therefore, even though the two subunits are cubic and are thought of as being derived from face center cubic, since the overall unit cell, we have to put two of these together, uh, we end up with a tetragonal unit cell. Let's kind of look at this kind of sideways. So at least from this angle, it's a lot easier to see the lime green. Those are the half of the tetrahedral holes that are filled up with sulfur atoms. For the last structure in this sequence, we have sodium vanadium sulfide. So the chemical formula is NaVs2. We have sodium located at half the corners diagonally across from each face and at half of the face. So we see that we have sodium there and there, they're diagonally across, and it turns out they're going to be at half of the faces turn around, there's one, and there's two. The vanadium is the silver color, so we see it's half of the faces, that's one of the face, two there, and then three at the top, and then also it's at half of the corners, and again, the alternating atoms are diagonally across from each other, along the same face. Again, sulfur is going to fill up half of the tetrahedral holes, now, one thing to keep in mind in this particular model is that the sulfurs are green. They come up to be slightly different shades of green. Uh, there's no great significance to that. They're still supposed to be sulfur. That's what you get when your ink cartridge is starting to run out of a particular color. <laughs> the color changes a little bit, so um, don't read any greater significance into it than that. Those, this shade of green or that shade of green are still sulfur. Now this one is even more complicated than the previous structures because we have to assemble it by adding together two subunits, but these subunits are not identical. One subunit is actually the mirror image of the other. And then we add those to put those together to get the overall unit cell, which again is not going to be cubic, it's going to be tetragonal.